Hello, in this video I will give you some overview on the Eclipse platform and some tips on how to configure it and how to use it. To download Eclipse you uh, should go to eclipse.org uh, website and then you come to this page in which you find this download button. This download button brings you to this page in which you can download the latest version but I suggest you to um, instead click on these download packages that will give you more options and here you can find different uh, versions, different distributions of Eclipse. Um, there is also an installer, so since some years now uh, Eclipse has an installer, but I, mm, I, will, I would suggest you not to use it because it is not easy to um, then understand where uh, it is being installed and which version and it is a bit more difficult to keep track, um, track of it. So um, to work with model-driven um, engineering uh, tasks, there are two distributions that are um, kind of recomm recommended. Um, one is this Eclipse IDE for Java and DSL developers and the other one is the Eclipse modeling tools. Now the difference between these two is mostly uh, in which um, plugins are installed um, but then you can uh, of course install other plugins on top of it so basically you can always customize it further. So. Um, it, it does not make much difference uh, because then you will install other uh, needed plugins. Um, you should download the one for your um, platform, of course. Uh, and now, uh, and then you will come, um, I have it downloaded already. Now you will have uh, something like this and then you can just extract this package here. Uh, so it, it is actually very simple, it does not require uh, installation. Uh, you have already then inside here a folder called Eclipse, which is already the installation. So basically you can uh, kind of archive this uh, folder and move it around and bring it to, uh, I don't know, a pen drive or a different fo um, PC uh, and you will have uh, your installation. And here inside it's enough to run the Eclipse executable uh, with execute um, and you will basically have your Eclipse uh, ready to run. Um, now I'm running the Eclipse for Java and DSL developers. So um, when you run Eclipse for the first time you will be asked for a workspace. Um, this is a folder in which uh, basically you keep um, all uh, your um, projects uh, configuration um, for a certain task. Uh, so you can have multiple workspaces with different configurations and different uh, setups. Um, normally it suggests you to create a new workspace in your home directory, but now I will instead create one here. Uh, so I just copy here the path and write it here. You can also use browse to find a directory, uh, but I prefer to do like this. And I will just call it workspace. It may take some time the first time you run Eclipse, um, but it's, uh, it, this is to be expected. Uh, and you need, of course, Java to be installed. Then um, you come to this uh, welcome page. You can uh, also just close it. And then you will um, come to this main view of Eclipse. Um, first of all, uh, it is useful to know how to um, uh, view which plugins are installed. And you can do this by clicking help and then about Eclipse ID and then here you have the information of which distribution of Eclipse uh, you have installed and then you can even mm, go to more details and then you find all the features that are installed and then 
with the history and the uh, details of, of features and in individual plugins uh, if you want to know for example if something is already installed or not uh, for example here we see that xtext is already installed and you can also uh, uninstall uh, specific things if you if you want. We are not going to do that now. Um, to install uh, plugins, you can you have two different options. Uh, one is the Eclipse Marketplace. So here you find um, kind of a list of um, software that is um package uh, for the marketplace uh, you can look at popular ones for example um spring tools and, and other things uh, or you can search for it uh, for example um i don't know tech tech lip text tech lips tech slips the clips it's a latex editor um for eclipse uh, and you can in just install it for from the marketplace um, some software is not available in the marketplace, but uh, it needs to be installed um, kind of uh, as individual plugins. And you can do that uh, with install new software. You can just click here and then um, here you select an update site. So a place where to find plugins. This is the like the basic one. Um, you will find the one with the correct version. The, version that you have downloaded of Eclipse and then uh, it will may take some time to update all the, the plugins and uh, you can select uh, or filter things here uh, like for example Axeleo um, then you click and next and go on I'm not doing this now because it can may take some time um, if you don't find some uh, plugins, it may be, uh, first of all, that it has been uh, removed or changed in a version of Eclipse because uh, this change changes quite quickly. And then also you may want to check uh, this uh, or uncheck these hide items that are already installed. So for example, if I look for this text, um, probably it will not find it, but if I uncheck this one, then it should find it, Xtext SDK. Uh, and also another uh, option is this group items by category. Sometimes it uh, some items may appear or disappear depending on how this is, uh, if this is selected or not. This I'm not sure why, but this is how um, it works. If you have a lot of, um, so you can also add uh, update sites here with the name and the URL or just putting the URL here. Um, if you have many of them, then it may be useful to uncheck this one because otherwise it will try to find uh, plugins in all, um, in all the existing uh, update sites and this may, may take some time. Um, Okay, so when, where are these plugins actually installed? Uh, so as I mentioned, um, it is everything inside this Eclipse folder. Uh, so all the installation is maintained here. Uh, um, so actually everything is inside, inside this plugins uh, folder. Uh, so you have all the installation of Eclipse and all the updates uh, there. Um, one useful thing to know is this eclipse.ini or INI uh, file, and which is just a textual file with some configuration. And there are some, um, some important uh, configuration that um, may be uh, useful. Uh, so one, um, is the memory uh, so these two um, parameters here are the starting memory of Eclipse that Eclipse may use in this case is 256 megabytes and the maximum uh, so this is uh, 2 gigabytes um, 2048 uh, megabytes uh, if you see that uh, your 
um, uh, either your system struggles or Eclipse uh, it's very slow, then you may try to adjust this. Um, but uh, the normal default values should work. And another important option is this uh, VM here. And uh, um, you see here, uh, it's using a VM that is distributed together with Eclipse. So um, actually, um, this is something I think new in the latest versions of Eclipse. So uh, it is distributing a Java runtime environment together with Eclipse. But you can change this one uh, to make it point uh, to some um, Java version that is installed in your uh, PC. Uh, so if you want to use a different uh, Java version, then here, instead of um, this uh, path here, you should put some absolute path in your system where Java is installed. And um, there are other options and you can uh, maybe uh, Google that or find um, descriptions of those. So um, the workspace uh, uh, is what maintains the configuration of this view, basically. Um, there is a metadata folder that is hidden. Uh, so if you show hidden files, you will find inside workspace this metadata that keeps all the configuration. And um, um, in the workspace in Eclipse, everything um, so in, in Eclipse, everything works in uh, in the workspace and in projects. So you cannot open individual files like in other IDEs, but everything has to be inside uh, projects. So you can create, for example, we can create a Java project and we can call it uh, my first uh, uh, Eclipse project. And this will be created by default in the, in the inside the workspace. Uh, so we can go on here, you have other configurations, but for the moment uh, we can just click finish. And then this project will be created uh, inside the workspace, as you see here, my first Eclipse project. Um, now I created the Java project, but if you want to add to the workspace some um, file that is not necessarily a Java project, so Eclipse can be used for very different things, um, then you can find here project and uh, uh, you have general project in which it is just like a container uh, in which you can put uh, basically whatever. Um, that window was saying referenced, referenced projects, so you can say that projects need each other, for example. And here inside, you can just add a file, let's see, I don't know, a markdown file. Um, which I say, this is just an example, and then we can preview it as a readme, but anyway, as a markdown, but, and then uh, you will see that this will be still uh, in the workspace uh, folder. Um, now, uh, it is important to understand also that uh, the workspace is more like a logical container than a physical container. So projects are in the workspace, but they don't need to be. We can also create a, a, another project that is outside. Uh, so um, let's call it my second project that is outside workspace. And then instead of uh, selecting use default location, um, we can just uh, use another folder. Uh, in this case, I will, I want to have it in the same level of the workspace here, uh, instead of inside, I want to have it uh, here. So I create a new folder. I call it in this case, in the same as the project, I just copied the name. 
and I select this one. So this project in this case uh, will be, uh, so it is still a Java project, but it will be uh, outside uh, of the workspace and not inside of the workspace. Um, so they don't need to be in the workspace. Um, and it is actually better uh, if you have it outside because then you can um, version them and uh, do different things and the workspace is just um, a logical container and you can have in the same workspace projects from uh, from different uh, from different places. Um, now, for example, uh, if I uh, remove these projects, uh, I can just select them and click delete. Then there is um, an option here that says del delete project content on disk cannot be undone. This would, would actually delete the files, but otherwise it will just remove the projects from the workspace. And uh, so this is safe un unless you click this one. Uh, so this is okay to do. You can just remove the projects. And then, uh, so now you see we have a bit of, um, I will close now Eclipse just to show you. We have a bit of what we can think about of an, an, an inconsistency because in the workspace folder you have still the projects. We have the projects that is outside. But if now um, I open Eclipse again, then in the same workspace, uh, so it remembers, then you will see that is empty. Uh, so we don't have anything. That's because the workspace, as I was mentioning, it's a logical workspace. So what you can always do is to import projects that are either uh, inside the workspace or in another place. And um, the best way that I find to do it uh, is these existing projects into workspace. Uh, so uh, you can just go forward, select the folder. Uh, and in this case, we can select uh, this root folder uh, in which inside I have workspace and my, my, the other one, uh, my second project that is outside workspace. And then uh, it will be able to find them. Uh, so if you also uh, can select, select search for nested projects when you have projects that are maybe inside projects, uh, but you see that it found the two that are inside the workspace and the other one that is uh, outside. Uh, um, so you can just import them and then you have again uh, the projects uh, ready. It will take some time to adjust it and uh, etc. Now, um, there are some other uh, things to know about Eclipse. So one is perspectives. Um, it is probably hidden under the under my webcam there. So I will just do that. So here you have these buttons that are uh, perspectives. Um, probably you can reach them also from uh, here. And the perspective is basically an arrangement of windows. Uh, so here we are in the Java perspective, but we can open other uh, and depending on the plugins that you have installed, um, you will have other perspectives. So one is, for example, the debug perspective uh, in which it will open uh, different things uh, for, that are used for uh, debugging. Uh, so uh, sometimes it may happen that uh, you uh, lose some windows and that is maybe or it's you have a different view and that is maybe because you are you are uh, working in a different perspective uh, so for example we see that here we don't have this out we have this outline but in the debug we don't have it anymore etc uh, um, perspective basically are a collection of these in an arrangement of these views um, for example, the outline, etc. Uh, so uh, it may happen that uh, you click like this and you close it and then you don't know how to restore it because if you go to the perspective, then it's uh, in the configuration that you uh, selected and then these windows are gone. Um, you can do two things. One is to uh, reset the perspective. 
right click reset and it will reset the perspective to defaults and then it will the the, the windows uh, would come again or otherwise what you can do is to uh, show view and then find uh, for example the outline view and open it again uh, so here in the show view basically you have a list of all these um, uh, views uh, that are around and uh, two very useful to have is these uh, problems um, that shows you warnings and errors inside projects um, and the other one is the console uh, in which you see output when you run um, um, Java programs or other things. Uh, so these are two useful um, views to have. Um, about problems, uh, one thing to know is that uh, you can delete warnings uh, etc here because sometimes they will uh, stay there even if they are resolved uh, so if if you if let's say the window is not uh, refreshed then you may have old problems there so it's always good to if you are unsure it's always good to delete them and um, have them as new um, okay so um, We can have a hello world uh, example here. Uh, so I will just add um, a class in my Java project just to show you an, uh, some other useful things. Uh, so if I, I can add a class and let's um, call it hello world. world d. And as you know, uh, uh, or I don't know if you know, but in Java, you know, always have to have a package and there is kind of um, a standard to write packages name, which is like the reverse of um, kind of website names. Uh, so in this case, uh, so going with the kind of domain first and then um, uh, with the more specific. Uh, so for example, we used in this case and O like Norway, MTNU, and then TDT4250, which is the name of the course. And then, for example, hello world. And then we will also ask to create a public sta static void main just to run it. Uh, so we will have this, this Java class. Um, zoom a bit. Uh, here we will have some generated code and then we will just write uh, um, printlen hello tdt4250 and then we save it. Then um, how can we run uh, this one? Uh, so we uh, run uh, projects or other things in uh, Eclipse by run configurations. So this kind of play button here, you can just select and run as Java application. And you will see that the output is provided in the console. So you see hello TDT4250. And run configurations, the selected one are kept here. So you can select this again. And um, uh, run configurations uh, have options uh, so you have the project the main class and then you have uh, you can pass arguments uh, so um, um, so these arguments that you pass here they will be catched um, they will be inside this args uh, vector uh, and then you can define which uh, Java environment and other things. Uh, so if you want to customize how something is executed, you can do it uh, here for the options uh, of the run configurations. Um, and here you have also uh, options to run external tools, um, but this is the important one, the run, uh, the run as run configurations. 
you can run these things as uh, debugs also uh, so you can for example add breakpoints and then run as debug as java application and it, it will launch the debugger and then it says here that uh, you should go switch to the debug perspective and so you should change the view of eclipse to the perspective we can do that and we will see uh, uh, we see for example the content of this args vector uh, etc uh, so like the debugger then you have the buttons to resume stop etc and in the same way the debug configurations can be uh, the options can be uh, provided here so for example uh, if we um, add here a parameter like um, um, I don't know, Trondheim then uh, we debug again and then we see that in the parameters uh, in the args here we now have one parameter that is Trondheim we're going back to the Java uh, perspective um, um, so here also there is an option that is uh, built automatically which means that every time I change something here then and then I save you will see you don't see it now because it's very very fast but that the project will should will be uh, built uh, again compiled again and so you can change that and then you will need to do it uh, to build it uh, manually yeah? but normally it's good to have it on build automatically but if you have big projects and a lot of projects in the workspace then it will it may take some time um, one of the last thing is about projects configuration so you can you have properties of, of individual projects um, about encoding and some properties that are specific of the kind of project um, important one for Java is the build path uh, so you can add libraries and um, define which uh, runtime environment you use etc uh, and other things uh, so if you have some compilation problems then you may want to check uh, this um, java build path and um, the compiler uh, um, uh, options etc and when you work with multiple projects and with projects that depend on each other it is very important that these options are um, the same for all of them uh, so if you say that um, for example for one project you use compliance for java 17 uh, then uh, you need to be careful if others are not configured that way so you either need to have all for configured for being built and uh, run on Java 17 um, or a different version uh, so if you have a um, lot of compilation problems then uh, especially when you work with multiple plugins then you should check here if the um, the, comp the, the, the compiler and build path settings are are okay and then here you can also configure um workspace settings uh not clicking here um yeah okay if you have enable specific project specific settings then you can click uh, to configure um workspace settings and, and uh, um yeah so you have these two levels of configuration the workspace settings and then you can have project specific uh, settings um, one interesting button or menu option here is the restart uh, so when you want to restart because you have installed something or you feel that uh, Eclipse is not responding well uh, this may happen you may just uh, select restart and then uh, you, you will simply have a restart of Eclipse uh, in the same uh, in the same workspace um, 
what it may be useful also is this switch workspace uh, which is uh, normally here you will find uh, the list of workspace that you have used but is also useful uh, if for example you run Eclipse and then um, you decide to check uh, use this as default and do not ask again then what will happen is that uh, every time you cannot uh, basically choose the workspace anymore uh, so you, you will just uh, be left with what you have used last but then you can switch work workspace here and select another one uh, so you can have for example workspace um, 2 and then it will just uh, move uh, the configuration to this other one uh, and every time is as you run Eclipse for the first time and for example here you can decide to have um, only one of the projects uh, you can decide to have only this project that is, is outside uh, so you have now the second workspace with a different configuration that you use for another task and then you can switch between the two uh, so you can go to the other one to the first one in which you have the three projects and you work with all the three of them Okay, so uh, I think this is uh, the these are the main uh, important things to know for somebody who uses eclipses for, eclipse for the first time, um, and I hope this uh, will help. Thank you.